This is one thing that so many players struggle with, handling contact and physicality. Trust me, it's not easy. Depending on where you go, the game can get very physical. And if you didn't grow up getting used to this, again, it's something that you have to learn how to do. But the good news is, is that it's definitely a quality we can develop. So my guy Cam and I are here in the Philippines running camps, helping to build some courts out here. And one thing about hoops here is that it's physical. And pretty much everywhere we go, we tend to hoop a good amount. And it's fun to see the differences in style of play. And although we do play pretty physically at our gym detail in Miami, it ain't like this. Plus, we got a 3x3 tournament, some exhibition games, and just playing pickup to kick off our new courts. So we wanted to experiment a bit and find a few ways to work on handling contact and pressure. So I'll take you guys through the workout and give you some pointers along the way. Now it's funny because I always get asked how to work on dealing with contact on finishes, drives, defense, all that. And usually my answer is, well, at some point, you're gonna actually have to play against contact and physicality like we do here. As with anything, we get better and accustomed to something as we get more experience with it. So there's no substitute, especially working on air for stuff like this. Why? Because how often do you get into positions like this when you work out on air? How often do you actually get bumped off your line? Never. But I know you won't always have somebody to train with, trust me. So there are some things you can do to work on this on your own. But for now, study the techniques I give you here and stick around to the end of the video to get my answer on that. Let's get into it. So first off is this turn the corner drill where the defense starts facing the sideline and the ball handler is working to get around them even with the defender using the ball to be super physical. So the main thing we're working on here is drive perseverance. Learning how to sneak around this corner to get an angle on the defender like I finally get down here. But as you see, this often takes hitting a crazy angle and turning that inside shoulder to slip by. But then on the flip side of that, it's developing a feel for when to potentially turn back the other way, especially if you have a physical defender who's overplaying it. Or rather than trying to get by, when to create some contact and then separate backwards. And notice this forearm action too. You can say it's an offensive foul all you want, but if you look at any of the best ball handlers, they're constantly using this. And then honestly, one of the toughest things is actually making the shot after this. You're so tense and braced for the contact, plus you're oftentimes off balance, but being able to catch yourself and relax for the jumper ain't easy, but it's a skill you can definitely develop. Next one here, we're starting out by tossing basketballs to each other, trying to create some chaos. And I'm putting the ball right on the ground and trying to score with physicality. To me, one of the biggest things about playing through contact is finding a balance in your speeds. Going fast enough to create momentum, but not so fast that you're out of control. This is a good way to start working on that. And you'll notice that some of our best reps here were maybe attacking at a 60 to 80% speed, definitely not full speed, versus just attacking with everything we have speed-wise. Same thing with these clips, where these guys are, yes, driving with intent, but doing it at a speed that's a bit slower than usual. Next one here is recovery shooting. So we're just kind of dribbling around freely, our partner is pushing us, and then we have to recover and get into the shot. Because remember how I talked about how hard it is to shoot off being pushed? Definitely something to work on. And this doesn't apply just to off the dribble shots or tough shots. This could be where you're getting pushed coming off an off ball screen and you've got to regain control and shoot like you see here. Now notice on a couple of these, we try to find that balance through the craziness. And then others, we just shoot it slightly off balance. This is a big key to working on this. On some, working to find that stability to jump straight up and down and doing it quickly, but also understanding that sometimes that's just not possible and letting it fly without that. Now on this one, the defense is reaching in, trying to steal the ball, which would then end the rep. They don't steal it whenever they sprint by on either side, turning and trying to find open space for a jumper. So the main focus here for me was ball and body placement. Keeping my body in between the ball and the defender, which makes it super tough to get to. This does take a lot of ball control to be able to pocket the ball, even right after a move to keep it away, and constantly rotate a bit to maintain this distance. But you see this all the time with the best ball handlers, who are always finding subtle ways to play keep away. And then along with this was composure. Not getting sped up, but remaining calm through these reaches, to then turn, keep tabs on the defender's positioning, and find a comfortable shot. Next is high speed one-on-one. -on -one. Kind of like a transition situation. I'm tossing the ball up and whenever it hits the ground, he can turn to play defense. Got to score in the paint on this one, which means we got no choice but to drive through contact. So one big focus here is avoiding wide angles like this. In the game, it's probably going to be a second and third layer of defense there. So the best players at every level are really good at maintaining their line to the basket and winning the contact battle to do so. Then we're just playing regular 1v1 with five dribbles instead of our regular three because, you know, we're in the Philippines. 
and the defense here is supposed to be physical. So again, I'm really putting a big emphasis on staying on my line. And if I can't stay on it, getting him to overplay it so I can reverse it the other way, but still stay on a tight lane to the rim. Overall, it was decent. Plays like this still happened where I wasn't aggressive enough with my bump, and because of that, got knocked off my line. Something to improve on. Then lastly, after five minutes of almost dying in the humidity, we finished with some full court pressure. The goal here is to stay inside the lane lines and rather than just beating your defender, to stay composed and welcome the physicality. This is one of the areas I see players struggle with most often and I think it just comes down to controlling your pace and your space. If you get sped up and pushed out of your position, you're done. So work on getting comfortable keeping that ball away, battling back by countering with your own contact, and most importantly, playing at your pace. Eventually, it'll become something you welcome. Then lastly, once again, there's no substitute for just going out and playing against physical defenders, against older, stronger players. But as I promised, here are some things you can work on if you don't have a partner for that day. And how I approach this is finding the qualities that make us good at playing through contact, and then attacking these little qualities with these pieces of the bigger puzzle. So one of these is ball control, but more specifically ball control at high speeds in tough positions. Like you saw here, if you can control the ball as you're getting bumped, as you create bumps, as you're a little bit off balance, that helps a lot. Number two is shooting adaptability. So being able to create space, but then get on balance quickly, shoot from weird foot positions, fade in the air a little bit. If you're able to shoot even slightly tougher shots and make them at a high clip, this is going to help you score through contact. Obviously, the third one could just be getting strong, so really getting comfortable and strong and powerful in these low positions. Another one could be working on these curvilinear drives. Again, as you're going through contact, you can't just move straight like we do in so much training. So getting comfortable in these big curves is going to help you move and sneak past defenders when it comes time to play against physicality. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this workout, took some points from it. As you can see, when you're training through contact, it'll definitely take a lot out of you, but it's a good lesson as to why you should definitely be training through contact, even if that means finding people to train with. Because once you get in the game, if you're already good at that and accustomed to it, it's going to make the game a lot easier for you. Thank you guys for tuning in. As always, if you're interested in where we're coming to next, make sure to check the link in the description. Until next time.